Hi hey everybody, before we start this video off, I just wanted to say uh, you should definitely follow me on Twitch. Um, I stream all the time, and at 500 Twitch followers, I'm gonna do... Uh, I was gonna do a face reveal, but I decided I'm gonna reveal my face in like a day or two or something like that. I don't know, whatever. You guys should follow me on Twitch. I love you. Enjoy the video. In part one of this video, I gave a brief, albeit slightly misleading, description of the history of Halo's physics. In this video, I'm going to make good on the title and truly break down the physics of Halo Infinite based on the gameplay trailer we've seen. I hope you guys stick around and get a good idea of what I'm discussing here, and I need you to understand that this is all speculation. I could be completely wrong or making leaps of logic, but I do feel there's enough here to indicate some simulation of real-life physics. But just to sort of recap, we discussed at length the storied history of Halo's physics and how it has evolved. From Halo CE's custom-built engine, to Halo 2's first-time utilization of the Havoc engine, to Halo 3's much more robust use of the Havoc engine, to Reach's Forge palette allowing much more diversity in terms of toys to play with for physics, to Halo 4's custom gravity trait zones, to Halo 5's sort of departure from focusing on physics simulation in favor of more so focusing on actual map making, which again isn't inherently a bad thing. Whew! Now you're up to speed in a general sense, but that previous video is linked in the description if you want a more robust breakdown. Now, it's time for Infinite. So for this segment of gameplay, and this should really go without saying, we're going to go ahead and skip the funny foreign man and the gun shoot guy talking, because we're simply focused on observing physics simulation at a granular level. Right out the gate, I'd like to state that as Chief fires upon this little squad of grunts, you can visibly see his bullets causing ripples and even having this beautiful plume of water rise up from where he shoots. This is a feature anyone who's played Halo 3 should remember, as it did an excellent job of displaying that with this sort of weird polygonal shape where you fire your weapon. Nowadays, it's more noticeable with the improvement of graphics, but for the time, it was cutting edge. Of course, we know the grunts have blood from being shot, but disappointingly, the blood doesn't seem to paint the environment as it did in the past. I'm hoping this is a matter of the game being more polished, and this is just something that was cut for time's sake. If we look closely at the trees as Chief passes them by, they do appear to sway slightly in the breeze. This is also nothing new. It was featured in Halo's past as well. Here's an example from Halo 3. As has been standard in the industry for quite a while, the Warthog kicks dirt, grass, water, and such behind it as it drives. It looks especially nice here, but that is featured in Combat Evolved. Something to note is the power slide the Chief does in the Warthog here. I noticed that there are tire tread marks in the dirt here, but they're actually here before Chief even reaches them. I'd be really disappointed to find that they weren't featured in the game, and I really hope 343 does implement them. Another thing to note is just how reactive to the environment the Warthog's shock system is. It's really cool to watch it bob and weave with the environment around it. I want to mention the particle effects behind the Warthog again, because these little blades of grass kicking up are just an awesome detail. Something that I'm really appreciative of is when the Grunt fires the plasma pistol at the Warthog. The liquid explosion as it smacks it just looks cool. No two ways about it. It appears that Reach does feature a similar particle effect, but its presentation doesn't even come close. The shocks as the Warthog hits the ground below are again just fantastic. And this is something that the previous Halos do, but not on this level of detail. As Chief drives forward, this grunt pleads for him not to run him over. No mercy for the banished. The explosion effect is so damn beautiful, I can't even comprehend it. Now, I'd heard a ton of people claiming that when the grunt blows up on the Warthog, the wheel on the Warthog gets blown off. I was never able to spot that, and as such, I scoffed at such an idea. But guess what? It 100% does! Look at this frame. You can see that the tire is completely gone. How amazing is that? Now, as Chief begins firing upon these banished forces, I notice that in the segment outside of the vehicle, almost every weapon seems to be projectile based. I think that's a huge improvement on the gunplay. I noticed that a good chunk of the deaths here appear to be ragdoll physics, but we'll get back to that. Look at that grunt death. He explodes and goes flying away like they used to. God, I love the sight of it. Watching these brute drop pods explode is so satisfying. I guess we're going to have to keep an eye on those so we don't get killed by the explosions. 
Not to mention, the doors after flinging off, albeit a bit light and janky, do appear to react with Craig here as he makes the final move of his life. R.I.P. Craig, never forget. But Craig's death is not in vain, because he showed off the really cool way that enemies shed armor as they're being fired upon. Check it out. I noticed a couple pieces kind of chipping off here and there. The best example is when Chief Spike grenades this brute here, and the explosion sees a confetti of armor pieces chipping off. Not that it's strictly physics related, but seeing the brutes throw the grunts is just fun, and I hope to see little things like this done a whole lot more. Skipping ahead just a bit, the chief detonates these fusion coils, and wow, what an explosion effect. The entire thing just rocks. All the objects within proximity are displaced, even this large metal crate is knocked around. This again is nothing new for Halo, but it's been a while since it's really been focused on as much as it has been here. Now as Chief kills these two grunts, they both have the exact same death animation. Not a deal breaker, but something that's worth noting. Hopefully headshots don't all have a fixed animation. But after they die, this plasma grenade does pop up into the sky and knocks their lifeless bodies away. Again, the ragdoll physics is very promising. The ability to grapple fusion coils is a game changer, and I can think of some really fun objective game types that could be created if we were able to give the fusion coil an objective designation. Hey, r slash hitbox porn. Did you notice that the chief missed this grenade here? Because it went precisely through the gap inside this explosive object? That's why the box didn't actually explode. Something I want to mention about the Mangler is its really excellent barrel. The way it shifts around as chief moves is just awesome. I'd love it if guns actually reacted to physical movement in games as a standard from now on. As chief hops into the shade turret, I never noticed all these little explosions going off on the right. The way they rocket and scatter into different directions looks incredible. I'm all for it. This brute being shot in the back actually grabs his back in pain. I'm wondering if this means the game is doing some sort of contextual animations, depending on where enemies are shot from. I can only hope. There's so much potential here, and I'm seeing some stuff that looks the best I've ever seen it. But I really hope that there's even more going on behind the scenes, and for us to discover soon. Well, that actually just about wraps up the footage for Halo Infinite. I've got some other ideas kind of rattling around in my brain here, but I'd be lying if I said we weren't kind of stretched for content as of right now. This is why I've actually held back a bit on explicitly Halo Infinite related content, and have kind of dipped my toes into other things. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Now, I want to go ahead and say that if you enjoy the content and want to continue to see content like it, subscribing is a really good way of showing it. If you want to support me, and my goal to be able to do all of this is a living, I have a Patreon that is linked in my description that you can support me on. Now, of course, I'm going to thank my patrons, as you guys are amazing. Krypton Cantrips at $15 per month, Knuck and Futz at $2 per month, Sovereign at $10 per month, Tease at $10 per month, Ryan McCann at $10 per month, Ghost Warrior 448 at $5 per month, Screamy at $15 per month, Reclaimer at $10 per month, and Anthony Barry at $5 per month. Again, thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys make it a lot easier to do this than it could be. And the fact that you guys are willing to support me in that way is amazing. Anyway, that just about wraps this one up, guys. Uh, thank you so much. And the regular day for us to be uploading going forward is going to be on Wednesdays from now on. The essays will be de delegated to Wednesdays going forward. Alrighty, guys. Have a good one. See ya.